like, what was the decision to have your father on the show? Like, was that something you grappled with or was it like, no, this is my life. I'm going to show it. Cause that's like a really personal fact that maybe you didn't yeah. need to show. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't have showed it. I'm just saying like, was that a hard thing to decide to do? Well, the heart, yes, it was very difficult because I worried tremendously about my father's mental health and his well-being. And I know that opening up your life in this situation will open him up to a lot of criticism. And I did not want him, if he's going to be vulnerable and honest, I didn't want him to have to deal with that. However, at that point in time, he was living with me. I was taking care of him. He had just gotten out of rehab and we were trying to manage, okay, I really want this. I want to take this opportunity with the show. I really want to do it. But is my father's situation going to not allow me to do it, if that makes sense? And so I just spoke with my dad about it and he was like, no, hell yeah. Like I, I'm down for that. That's good. I, love, I think it was cathartic for him. It was like therapeutic and like an accountability thing. Do you think the show helped him? Cause like, I know he had been in like sober living before. Like, do you think the show helped him get back there? Like, I don't mean like Bravo, the producers. I just mean like being part of this journey. Absolutely. Cause I think it forced him to really look at himself in the mirror and be honest of where he was at. And knowing that the can like the camera brought it out in him. Like he was the most honest and real I've seen him be when he was in front of a camera. It was really cool because for the last decade, we did this song and dance of him telling me what I want to hear and him saying one thing and doing another, right? Yeah. And for the camera like forced him to actually like get real. Yeah, and you was, can't hide from the camera. Yeah. Did he watch the show like when it was? So like, and when did you last speak to him? Because I know like earlier in the year, like a few weeks ago, you said like you hadn't heard from him. Is that still the case? Yes, unfortunately. So I have not watched, I don't know if he's watched the show. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, when, when the epidemic hit and we all quarantined, he spent time here at my home. He lived with us during that time because obvious reasons. And he was doing so well. He was like helping me on projects around my house, spending a lot of time with the kids. Um, he was even working outside on building like decks. Like he, he actually was thriving, um, but some things happened where boundaries were broken. And so I had to ask him to go and find an apartment because that was always part of my deal. Is like, I'm gonna help you, but you have to be sufficient, like self-sufficient. Like you are a 64 year old man you need to be independent um, because it's not healthy for me and my family to have him like as one of my children, if you will. Yeah. It, it, there's, I know people disagree, they can disagree all they want, but no one knows what it's like to be in my shoes and how um, dysfunctional it is with roles reversed. And my dad had just worked so hard on being sober in his sobriety I didn't want to enable any past cycles or behaviors or so it, it really is the best in his best interest, but that really pissed him off. And um, when I wasn't giving him everything he wanted and I was holding my boundaries with him, he stopped speaking to me. So the last time I spoke to my dad was my birthday, which was in September last year. Wow. Right. And it's like, I mean, look, I'm not a psychiatrist, but right. Like it's like enabling in any, you know, there's like, we all have different addictions, mm -hmm. but it's like enabling to say yes to everything. Yeah. Cause it, it, you just slip right back into your old cycles. And with addiction, a lot of people aren't aware of like a lot of the mental health issues behind it that usually people are masking or some past trauma or, you know, it's, it's very, I mean, I'm not an expert either, but I did spend a lot of time studying with my dad. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that trigger addiction. Yeah. And 
then he has to be willing to continue that work. So you haven't spoken to him, like he moved out to the apartment and now, so you don't know if he's like in, he's in sober living or not, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Wow. My brother Will talks to him, but, um, which is interesting because we saw Will on the show, right? And he's not even, my dad was his stepdad. So he's not even a biological son of my father. So I think that's really big of Will. Yeah. But. Well, hopefully he's okay. I, it, it seems that he's okay. That's good. Like, meaning he has a roof over his head and he, you know, he's, he's okay. And it sounds like the show at least pushed him in the right direction. Yes, 100%. My dad would not be here today had, one, I not intervened, and two, I truly believe that if he didn't share his journey in such a big way.